suffered almost a trillion dollars in cuts during this administration. And, uh, you know, our Navy is down to its smallest size since 1917. The Air Force since 1940. Uh, the Commandant Marine Corps recent con congressional testimony said half of our undeployed units are not combat ready. You know, it goes on and on. With the sequester, which is the chicken's way of doing things, quite frankly, uh, our military personnel has been cut. You know, lieutenant colonels and majors and captains getting letters every month telling them not to re-enlist people who were planning a military career. Many generals retiring early, not wanting to be a part of what is going on. The morale is as low as anybody can ever remember it being in the military. We're not taking care of our veterans. We have 22 to 23 veterans committing suicide every single day. And that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the carnage that is going on in their lives. And, you know, we need to be thinking in terms of how do we support people in the military? When they enlist, they ought to be enrolled the day they enlist in a support program that should last throughout their military career, particularly when they're in combat zones. And we should have people in place to help integrate them back into society with a job a year before they're discharged so they have a seamless transition and they should have health savings account and they should be able to go to any hospital or clinic in the country and they should not have to go to veterans facilities and we should be happy to take care of them. military is important is because there are very bad actors in the world out there. The radical jihadists wish to destroy us and our way of life. And they are growing by leaps and bounds. Now, if I were interested in the destruction of America and I was in charge, I'm just talking about me, what I would do is I would try to divide the population. I would drive a wedge everywhere I could find one. A war on women, racial wars, income wars, age wars, religious wars. I would just have everybody at each other's throat. Everybody thinking that they were enemies and that they needed to destroy their neighbor. That's number one. Number two, I would drive the debt to an unsustainable level, destabilizing the financial foundation of the country. I mean, I would be trying to get people on welfare programs, trying to get everybody on food stamps. I'd be giving people free phones. You know, I would, you know, I would be inviting people in from other countries and giving them benefits. I mean, I would just be driving that thing crazy so I could destabilize it. And then I would weaken our military while our enemies were growing. Now that's what I would do. Any resemblance to what's going on is purely coincidental. <laughs> We must do to change that course of action. You know, in terms of the, our financial footing, it's very important for the American people to understand what our financial condition is. You hear about the 18 and a half to 19 trillion dollar national debt. Everybody's heard about that. That's a big number. We we hear that number, but can you even comprehend what that number means? Let's just dial it back to $18 trillion. To pay $18 trillion off at a rate of $10 million a day, 365 days a year, would take over 5,000 years. And that is what we are putting on the backs of our young people. How can we do that with good conscience? 
You know, Thomas Jefferson said it's immoral to pass debt to the next generation. If we could, with a time machine, transport him to our day, he would probably stroke out immediately. <laughs> and he just wouldn't even be able to believe what was going on. It's unbelievable. But the, that's the good news. Because it's actually much worse than that. When you go home today, please look up fiscal gap. So you know what we really owe. It's all the unfunded liabilities, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, CAP.